In the feature segment today, the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This year, the USDA is celebrating its 150th anniversary. President Abraham Lincoln signed the USDA into being in May 1862. In his last annual speech to the Congress, he dubbed it the People's Department. Mark DeMarcus' John Nichols reports. One year into the Civil War, additional Union troops were rushed to Washington, D.C. to protect the nation's capital from rapidly advancing Confederate forces. With his back against the wall, President Abraham Lincoln struggled to unite a bitterly divided nation. A peculiar time, it would seem, for the president to focus on agriculture. Yet that's exactly what Lincoln did. Signing legislation in May of 1862, creating what he later called the People's Department. You know, I think if Abraham Lincoln came back and saw what he began, he would be extraordinarily proud. I'm not sure he would recognize his USDA. We started out 150 years ago with a very narrow responsibility. That was the function. Today, we do so much more. When the Agriculture Department was created in 1862, the United States population was estimated at 31 million people. Nearly half of all Americans lived on farms, and about 90% were connected, directly or indirectly, to agriculture. 150 years later, the population has increased more than tenfold. Less than 2% of us live on farms, yet Americans enjoy access to abundant and affordable food. And USDA continues to fulfill Lincoln's vision of touching the lives of every American every day. The most important thing about USDA from my perspective is its reach. Uh, it really does affect every single American every single day, and it also impacts millions of people all around the world. At no time in history did the USDA play a more crucial role in sustaining the nation than during the Great Depression. In the wake of a stock market crash that vaporized an estimated $30 billion in equity, wages declined and unemployment soared. Between 1929 and 1932, the average worker's income fell by 40%, sparking a firestorm of home foreclosures. By 1934, over one million families had lost their farms. Those remaining on the land endured severe drought that persisted for years, yet commodity prices plummeted. On the southern plains, clouds of dust darkened the skies for weeks in a phenomenon that came to be known as the Dust Bowl. USDA worked with growers to minimize soil erosion, and the conservation programs that conquered the Dust Bowl have played a key role in American agriculture ever since. So I'm proud to say that in this administration, we have a record number of acres engaged and enrolled in conservation practices of one kind or another. All of this designed to, to avoid soil erosion. We're looking at about 29 million acres. $1.8 billion uh, of money goes into the pockets of farmers because of that program and allows us to prevent uh, the kind of circumstances we saw during the Depression. In addition to environmental challenges, America's farmers also faced severe economic hardships during the Depression. USDA established marketing programs and price supports designed to stabilize the agricultural economy. But rural citizens still lacked a vital piece of infrastructure that was powering a renaissance in urban America, electricity. In the 1930s, only about 10% of rural homes were wired for electrical power compared to 90% coverage in urban areas. USDA's Rural Electrification Administration, or REA, tackled the problem in 1935. Seven years later, nearly 50% of U.S. farms were energized, and by 1952, electricity was available to virtually every operation in the country. Urban citizens, of course, also suffered during the Depression. And as the worst economic downturn in history intensified, two million Americans were homeless and hungry. The Agriculture Department assisted the needy by distributing surplus food. To better nourish impoverished children, USDA established what would become the National School Lunch Program. The Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, formerly known as Food Stamps, also traces its roots to the Depression. All told, the Agriculture Department administers more than a dozen domestic nutrition programs. 
And the Congressional Budget Office estimates that more than 80 percent of USDA spending over the next decade will be for nutrition, while direct spending for agriculture is expected to account for less than 20 percent. But Vilsack stresses the symbiotic relationship of both campaigns. 14, 16 cents, depending upon the study that you look at, of every dollar that's spent in a grocery store ends up in a farmer's pocket. And so when people are suggesting huge cuts in the nutrition programs as a way of dealing with our fiscal challenges, farmers need to understand that's going to take money out of their pockets. Other USDA agencies manage America's national forests, enforce food safety regulations, and support the development of homegrown energy. In the last three years, we've doubled the amount of renewable energy generation in this country. And so the president has been very clear about this. This is the future. This is the future. And so a production tax credit will make sure that we continue to see a wind energy industry in the Midwest and across the country. We'll continue to support solar. We'll continue to support geothermal. We'll continue to support biofuel production. Why? Because it gives us more options, it, it diversifies our energy portfolio, it makes us more secure, it creates jobs, and it creates wealth and income for farmers. Perhaps USDA's most crucial program for producers is the safety net designed to better insulate farmers and ranchers from losses due to weather, market downturns, or other unexpected issues. And by continuing its work in agricultural research, the People's Department also fulfills the vision of its founder, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, we're still in the research business because ag productivity is key to everything else we do. Uh, but I think he would be impressed with the fact that we now have record exports, American agricultural products going all over the world. Uh, I think he would be amazed how few people in this country produce as much food as they produce. Uh, we are food secure as a nation in large part because of the productivity of American farmers and ranchers and producers. It's a great department. I have been extraordinarily privileged and honored to be part of it. Um, and I think Abe would be pretty pleased with what we're doing. For Market to Market, I'm John Nichols. And you can watch this story again on the People's Department on our Farm Week website. That's farmweek.msucares.com. You can also watch Farm Week stories on YouTube and Facebook. We'll also have a link to the Market to Market website where you can see the story as well as read the script. That's farmweek.msucares.com. And late and I submit to you, of course, USDA celebrates its 150th anniversary. Land grant universities in the United States celebrate their 150th anniversary. And I don't think you can downplay the impact that both have had on the world. I mean, just in terms of the land grant universities here in the United States, the ag research that has not only made our nation so bountiful in food production, you know, it's also those that's gone on around the world and helped other nations to feed themselves. And then also, sure. If you look at education, a lot of non-ag students go to land-grant universities, so the education realm was increased as well.